In the first video, I pointed out that if you had a passive split charge controller, you could never get optimum charging of both batteries. Indeed, I have personal experience for this. For many years, I used this, which is a driftgate split charge controller using diode technology. And to be fair, it worked flawlessly for about 15 years within its limitations, um, and that has a lot of value to me. However, I could never charge both batteries correctly. I use it in conjunction with a battery sense alternator, and if I put the sense wire onto the starter battery, it would go into float mode very quickly, and the second battery would never get fully charged. Or if I put the sense wire onto the second battery, it would stay in absorption mode for hour after hour, and the starter battery would get overcharged. I was always in the quandary as to which battery to sense from. And indeed, I even went to the trouble of putting in this little toggle switch so I could put the sense wire onto one or the other. But the fact is, it was still a big compromise. Well, I decided to upgrade my split charging unit, but I didn't know what solution to go for, which technology to use. It's been a while since I've looked at it. So my starting point was to go onto the internet and see what the experts are doing. Now these guys, to a man, they all recommend that one uses a DC to DC or battery to battery charger. The first thing I noticed was that these are bloody expensive, a great deal more than this cost. And I wasn't convinced, so I decided to look into this in a bit more detail before making up my own mind. DC to DC chargers are regarded as a game changer by many people. They're designed primarily be fitted to modern vehicles with smart alternators. And if you want to fit an auxiliary battery, this is done with minimum intervention into the vehicle's original wiring. Basically, you've got terminal to terminal connections between the two batteries running through the DC charger. Now I'm not an electronics engineer, I don't understand the circuitry, but I do note it's complicated. I know the technology is new and is constantly evolving and as a result, these charges are rather expensive. Now, apart from the high price and the great complexity of DC to DC chargers, I have other reservations about them. Firstly, the charging rate. Most DC to DC chargers will charge at 25, maybe 30 amps max. And this is fine if you've got a modestly sized auxiliary battery, maybe 50 to 80 amp hours. But if you've got a bigger setup, you will want a higher charging rate. You can buy high capacity DC to DC chargers, but these tend to be very expensive indeed. Secondly, the handling of alternative charging sources. Now, one of the touted advantages of these chargers is that they often contain an integrated solar charger, and some also have a main charger too. But to my mind, you want to keep them separate. I have separate solar and mains chargers, both very good and not that expensive either. And it means if the main unit fails, I can always rely on one of the other charging sources. And the next point is you want to be able to charge either battery from these alternative charging sources. To the best of my knowledge, all DC to DC chargers only charge the auxiliary unit. In my case, I've got simple toggle switch so I can decide which battery to charge. And indeed, a few years ago in Eastern Europe, I did have charging problems. And for a few days, I had to use the solar panel to charge the main battery until I got the problem sorted. If I'd been relying on a DC to DC charger, I would have been in great difficulty. So what to do? I want an intelligent split charge unit, but I've already decided that a DC to DC charger isn't for me. Now there are a number of such units on the market, and this was pioneered in the UK by a small firm called Smart Gauge, who marketed the power bank. Incidentally, they've since been sold to Merlin Power Systems. And if you look at it, you've got an electronics box which controls the overall charging and this in turn controls a high capacity relay. Now reading the literature, it's a bit difficult to really understand how it works, but the big problem I've got is that when the relay switches in, whether you like it or not, the two batteries are in parallel and you force them to charge at the same voltage, which isn't going to be ideal for both of them. 
Now what I really want is I want to have an intelligent multi-stage charger um, independent for both of the batteries. This technology is obviously um, very efficient and very mature by now. And I have found one such unit marketed by Sterling Power Products, their Pro Split unit. Now the two charging circuits aren't entirely independent because circuit one always takes precedence over circuit two. And what this means is that when you turn on in the morning, the starter battery will take all of the charge until it reaches a predetermined voltage and then the auxiliary battery will start charging too. But thereafter, the two batteries can charge at different rates and at different voltages according to their requirements. I bought a Sterling Pro Split R split charge controller. Now they sell various models. This one handles 120 amps and I've only got a 60 amp alternator, so that should be fine. There's no room inside the battery compartment for any other items, so I've had to mount it under the wing. But it's always very cool here, so it's not going to overheat. And furthermore, I always mount any electronics or anti-vibration mountings because they don't like vibrations. This is going to give an excellent charge performance, and I think it should be reliable too. I can do a quick test by starting the engine. And the way it's designed to work is it will firstly bring the battery, main battery up to full charge and will then bring in the auxiliary battery. And I can check this with my switchboard voltmeter here. So main battery starting off at 12.8, auxiliary also at 12.8, main battery 12.8, now starting to charge, 13, 13 and a half, auxiliary battery still at 12.8 and that has now come on to charge and is at 13.7 volts, main battery also 13.7 volts and this will no doubt rise. So it seems to be, it seems to be working as designed. I installed the split charge controller last autumn and since then I've spent the winter in the Iberian Peninsula and the vehicle did a lot of hard work. So how's the charger performed? Well in short, very well. Behaves exactly as expected. When I start off in the morning it takes quite a large current, maybe up to 50 amps. It would instantly handle double that if I had a larger alternator and battery set up. And as I drive along during the day, the charging comes down and it will reach the float level and it may be taking just two or three amps. So everything exactly as it should be. I did incidentally save myself a bunch of money compared to a DC to DC charger. Now, there's a couple of lessons to learn here. When I was on the lookout for a new charging unit and I saw what was being recommended by the various experts, all of them, to a man, recommended the use of a DC to DC charger, but it wasn't right for me. So the lesson here is don't just blindly follow the herd, but do your own research and buy what is right for you. A number of these experts were in fact merely recommending equipment which they sold, so obviously their advice wasn't going to be unbiased. But others gave unbiased advice in good faith. But the point is that what's right for one guy may not be right for someone else. And second point, my motto is always to use the simplest technology you can which does the job for you. This charging unit has incidentally proved to be completely reliable but it's what you'd expect. It's early days so far. But there is a little story behind this, and that is that one of the experts who strongly recommended the use of the DC to DC charger, he found to his cost that his much vaunted Red Arc unit had an alarming tendency to flatten the main battery whilst charging the auxiliary battery, the very thing which it should never do. In his case, fortunately, it only happened in his garage happened a couple of times. It would be much more serious if he'd been in the middle of nowhere on a long trip somewhere. Well that's it for today. I do incidentally have some very informative videos coming up shortly regarding a major electrical upgrade which I have performed on this old girl.
See you soon.